Hi, welcome to Coherent Solutions presentation on photon Doppler velocimetry and sensitivity demonstrations with Class 1M target lasers. I'm your presenter, David McCormick at CoherentSolutions.com, Technical Sales Manager of USA. In this presentation, we'll be talking about how much power it really takes in order to capture reflections and do analysis on PDV targets. The alternative title of this is why a high power target laser is generally not needed. If you're looking for PDV basics here, uh, please refer to this website. Uh, this is a very good video uh, that I also produced and that will answer a lot of your questions. There's also a handy PDV application at that same location. After about five, six minutes of this video, you should get a feeling for how much laser power you need for a photon Doppler velocity experiment. And I'll actually be showing real instruments and some screenshots of a demonstration of an actual single channel PDV so you can see what the sensitivity levels are like with the ODE that I'm using. So throughout this presentation, we'll be focused on just a single channel of PDV here for uh, simplicity's sake to show you the sensitivity. Traditionally, a lot of people like to start with a really high power laser, like a, a two watt, which is 2000 milliwatt laser. Uh, of course, the problem there is that's a little too much power to be putting through this circulator. It really only likes about plus 23 dBm. Uh, and so starting with something like 2000 milliwatts after the splitter, you still have substantially a lot of power. And of course, the real problem with this is it's a safety issue. Uh, that's a class 3B laser, so it comes with all the uh, you know safety requirements when you're working with it in the lab. Instead, we're going to replace that with two coherent solutions tunable lasers, which have a much more um, uh, reasonable amount of power, plus 15 dBm, which have some of the uh, class 1M. So that really alleviates some of your safety concerns. The target channel I'm going to be setting to 1500 nanometers and the reference laser I'll be setting to 1500.004 nanometers. That is equivalent to a 500 megahertz difference in the electromagnetic spectrum. Also, normally people will be using a real-time scope in a PDB setup, but uh, this particular lab experiment, what I had available, was an equivalent time scope. And so we're going to be using an equivalent time sampling scope and we're going to be splitting the signal out of the ODE in order to trigger it. In order to have a predictable amount of reflection, instead of having an actual DUT surface here, we're going to replace this with a essentially 100% reflector. It's not perfect. It's a 99% reflector here. So this is the setup we're going to be using here. For this single channel PDV experiment, here's the actual equipment we'll, we'll be using. We have an epic scope. We have a laser two channel. We have a Doppler blade. We have an ODE converter and of course the electrical splitter. When you hook these all up, this is what it looks like. Okay, let's look at the setup and understand where some of the losses are for both the target laser and the reference laser. If we start really going from point A to point C, you have losses going through the circulator twice after it reflects, through the inline power meter and attenuator, and then a little bit through the coupler. If you add up all those losses, those should give you approximately 4.35 dB of loss all the way from point A to point C. Now, if we look at the reference path, that's going from point B to point C, you have also about 0.75 dB through the attenuator, and you have uh, almost 10 dB of loss through the 10% of the coupler. If you add all that up, that's approximately 10.75 dB of loss from point B to C. What you see here is the actual user interface for the Doppler blade, and then also to the right here is a uh, paste-in of the scope display. So we're going to actually do a reality check on our assumptions about the loss here. So if you look at the target laser path, we were assuming about 4.35 dB of loss, which means if we start with plus 15 dB, we should end up close to 10.65 dBm. And the actual power meter says we have 10.83, so we actually have a little bit less loss than we assume, but it's not too far off. If we look at the other path from B to C for the reference laser, we were assuming about 
0.75 dB of loss. So starting with plus 15, we should end up with 4.25. And as we can see, we actually have 4.16. So again, these are pretty close to our estimates. I can't stress enough how useful it is to have an individual measurement of the target and the reference contribution going into the ODE converter. But that's exactly what you have here. This power actually represents the amount of power that is coming from the uh, target laser reflecting off and going back to the Doppler blade before it goes into the ODE converter. And if you look at the other power meter, it also is showing the contribution from the reference laser path. These are incredibly useful tools. Okay, as we start the experiment, both the attenuators and the Doppler blade are set to their minimum value. So the target laser is actually coming in pretty high at 10.9 dBm into the mixer. And as you can see, there's too much signal in the ODE in the right, and so you have a kind of a square wave. It's being saturated. So we're going to continue turning the attenuation up in that target path. And as you see, it's at minus 7, minus 9, minus 11. If you look over to the right, you'll see that that square wave starts to collapse into a linear sine wave. We're going to continue increasing the attenuation in that target path to emulate a reflection loss until we get something like 40 millivolt signal, which is still a fairly usable signal. And as you can see there, we have a 40 millivolt signal, which uh, is actually 80 millivolts if you take the splitter before the trigger on the scope into account. And so we're starting with plus 12 dBm on the far side of the circulator uh, for the probe. And this is emulating 44.5 dB of total uh, reflection attenuation. If you take that splitter into account uh, and you still want to have a 40 millivolt signal, it means you can withstand up to 47.5 dB of return loss on the reflection with these plus 15 dBm lasers and still get a very usable 40 millivolt signal on a real-time scope. So on the previous slide, you may have noticed what looked like small aberrations or ringing on the sine wave on the scope. And that's one of the side effects of using an equivalent time scope in this kind of application. Uh, equivalent time scope only takes one sample per trigger. And so uh, as the phase noise builds up until the next trigger, you're going to see the, those small kinds of aberrations. With a real time scope, uh, that signal would be much cleaner. If you're curious about the actual uh, nomenclature on the products that are used in this, uh, the laser is a Laser PXI 1002-2. The Doppler blade is a Doppler PXIE-1001. Uh, the ODE is an O2E PXIE-1101. That's a 25 gigahertz. And I just want to let viewers know that for the smaller systems, you don't have to use PXI. Everything that is available in PXI E is also available in the Matrix series, and these small standalone boxes slightly smaller than a cigar box. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation from Coherent Solutions. This is David McCormick, your Technical Sales Manager for the United States. Feel free to contact me with any of your PDV questions.